This driving lesson video is going to explain to you my best and most effective acronyms to help you learn to drive, to help you be a better driver, and ultimately to help you pass that driving test. An acronym is a word, a name, or a series of letters that come together in order to act as an abbreviation for a longer piece of text or a longer piece of speech. So for example, the USA is an acronym or abbreviation of the United States of America. And I love using these abbreviations when I'm teaching somebody how to drive because I think it's a very effective way for me to um, give knowledge and for the learner driver to retain knowledge and then ultimately use it when they're practicing or when they're doing their test. I have used these acronyms in the majority of my previous videos, but the reason I'm making this video is so that you will have all my best acronyms um, conveniently located in the one video, this video. I also have a new acronym that I've never used before, and I think this is a really good one, and you'll see that towards the end of the video. If you wish to support me by PayPal, if you wish to support my YouTube channel by making a donation, you can do so by PayPal. I leave links in the description and in the first comment. Thank you so much to anybody out there who has already been making donations. I really appreciate it. Donations have been flowing in from one euro to a hundred euro. And no matter what the amount is, I really appreciate the support. So thank you. So let's move on to these acronyms now. The first acronym I will always start when I meet someone for the first time is SOLO. SOLO, S-O-L-O. -O. So let's have a look at that now. So remember, any of these um, acronyms that I'm going through, there is a longer video which I will leave links in the description so you can reach those videos. I'm just going to go through them briefly here now, but more detailed videos, um, follow the links in the description. So SOLO I was mentioning anyway. So solo is something you should do when you get into the car for the first time. S-O-L-O. -O. S is seat. So adjust the seat to make sure that it's that, that it's properly suits you for your own body height and your own shape. So that looks good. O then is observation. So observe the mirrors to make sure that they're properly set up. So make sure that they're, that they're all good. And you can adjust then the side mirrors as well with the electric thing here um, to make sure that they're properly adjusted. L then is like a shape that we make down here. So you go like this, you kind of point your finger to the gear stick, then the handbrake, and then across here. So it's like the, it's like the shape of a letter L, and that's to make sure you're in neutral, the handbrake is up fully, and the seatbelt is on. So that's the L um, there, and the final O then is this here, this O here. So it's the shape of the wheel. To make sure that the wheel is properly adjusted you can just if i let that thing down here it can go up and down and in and out like this i usually leave it like that so i have plenty of leg room and then secure it again then so that's always do a solo that's solo always do solo before you start the car s for seat o for observing the mirrors l just thing down here and then make sure the wheel is properly adjusted next we have facts F-A-C-T. So this is really useful if you want to move off properly or if you want to do uh, an effective hill start. So F is first gear, as in go into first gear. A is accelerator. C is clutch. And then T is takeoff or time. So takeoff, as in take off the handbrake, or time, as in keep the feet steady for the first five seconds as the car is moving. So when the car starts moving and you're already in motion, just keep the feet steady for the five seconds. That's fact. Really good if you're, if you're kind of nervous at the beginning and you need some structure in order to help you remember to do things in the right way. First gear, accelerator, clutch up, and then T for takeoff. So the fact then, F, first gear. So I put the clutch in and go into first gear. A is for accelerator, so I get a little bit of juice just to try and give me a little bit of power then to move off. C then is for clutch, so raising the clutch up so I feel the bite. And you can feel the little lift on the car there and the noise reduction in the engine. And then T is take off our time, so I take off the handbrake, just make sure I'm okay, and then keep the feet steady then 
for five seconds as I move off, and that's fact. First gear, accelerator, clutch, and T for takeoff are time. Next then we have miss. So miss is a really good one to use if you're approaching a junction or a roundabout, and it helps you to get things done in the right order. So M is mirrors, I is indicator, S is for slow down, and then the final S then is to get down to second gear. Now the, the last S could be stop as well, but usually you get down to second gear before you stop. Mirrors indicate slow down and second gear. So miss then. Here I'm going to do it now with a left turn, okay? So I'm going to check my M for mirrors. So mirrors indicate. Now I'm slowing down and I'm going to go to second gear about 15, 20 meters before junction. Double checking the mirrors. And in I go then. So that was the miss there on that left turn. M for mirrors, I for indicator, S for slow down gradually, and the final S then was second gear. Next is probably the most common one that I use, and that is how to move off properly, the one, two, three rule. One, two, three. So this is if you're moving off from the side of the road, maybe if you're starting a turnabout even, or doing a hill start, always remember the one, two, three rule. One gear stick, two indicators, three mirrors, and a blind spot. So the one, two, three rule then, as I was, as I was mentioning, nice and easy to remember. Here it is, one for first gear, two for the indicators, and then three for the three mirrors, and a proper blind spot, and off I go then, checking my mirrors as I go. Nice and easy to remember, you could use it five or six or seven, maybe more times in your test. One, two, three. One gear stick, two indicators, three mirrors, and a blind spot. A lot of learner drivers ask me, when do I use the handbrake? Do I use the handbrake at stop signs? Do I use it at every single stop sign? Do I use it at lights? You, like, I can't answer that question in, in, in a few words, but I have developed an acronym a few years ago called HALT, H-A-L-T, HALT. And that helps to explain the main areas where you should use the handbrake. So H is for hills. So if you're on uphill, you should use the handbrake to avoid rolling back. A is for a lighting or parking or setting down or something like that. So A for a lighting. So a lighting is basically a fancy word for disembarking or setting down. So like if somebody is alighting from your car, they're, they're leaving the car, they're disembarking basically. L is lights. So if you're stopped at lights, traffic lights that is, you should use the handbrake for extra security. And then T is time. So if you find yourself stopped for over four or five seconds, it's a good idea to use the handbrake. So halt on the hill, alighting or disembarking at lights and then time. They're the main areas you should use the handbrake. You don't necessarily have to use the handbrake if you're just stopped on a slight downhill and you're only stopped for a couple of seconds. There's really no need to use the handbrake there and it might only delay you. So it all depends on the situation. It depends on the circumstances. But halt is a, is a good starting point for where you need to use your handbrake. As I said, links in the description to more detailed videos to the ones I'm mentioning here. So as I was saying about halt, we should use the handbrake on the hill if we're lighting at lights and time. Now if I was to stop on this at this light here, if it is red, I could be stopped on a hill for a long time at lights. So that would be three reasons there that I would use the handbrake. But it looks like I don't have to here now because the light looks like it's staying green. But if I was stopping there, very often those lights can change colour and I could be stopped and, and I could be covering three aspects of that acronym. I could be on a hill stopped, I could be, um, I, will, I would be at lights and I could be stopped a long time. So there will be three reasons there to use the handbrake, but I didn't need it at that, at that moment in time. Next then is how to deal with hazards. And I often say to people, think A, B, C when you're dealing with hazards. The first three letters of the alphabet, A, B, C. A is the approach, B is beside, and C is when you're coming back in after the hazard. Let's have a look at that now. So the ABC rule briefly, let's say you're the driver of the red car here and the yellow car is um, an obstruction, a parked car for example. 
So A is the approach. So as you're approaching, make sure that you move out early and gradually. Don't kind of swerve out at the last second. So don't don't come up like this, be really close to that, and then suddenly come out like that. That's not part of A. A is the approach. So once again, just move out early and gradually, and that way it will help you to see better and it will help you to be seen. B then is to keep in a fairly straight line if there's a series of hazards. If there's more than one, you should stay out in a straight line and try and keep at least a meter or a door length from the parked car. And then C then is when you're coming back in. So when you're coming back in, come back in gradually and check in the side mirrors as you do so, making sure to uh, leave plenty of space between yourself and the yellow car. So A move uh, is the approach, sorry. A, approach, move out gradually. B, when you're beside, give at least a door, a door length or a meter, and C then when you're coming back in. Another thing as well, if you are stopping, so let's say you, you have to stop there because you want to let oncoming cars go. Well, don't, don't stop like really close to the back of the car. Stop like at least two car lengths back if you can, and slightly out to the right so you can see better. So that looks like a reasonably good place to stop. Not like this. You see, that, that, that's, that's like, way too close you're going to find it very hard to get out and you'll probably end up swerving so it's all about leaving the appropriate space there so you so you can make your exit easier so my next acronym is one that i have never used before i've never mentioned this before in a lesson i literally only thought up of this in the last few days and it's one that will be useful to you if you're nervous about your driving test coming up because a lot of people get nervous and I understand why because the driving test is a very big deal you want to do well and if you weren't nervous you know you wouldn't care so you're nervous because you care but nerves is like an energy okay it's like petrol or diesel is energy for your car so what you have to do is you have to use that energy that the nerves create and channel that energy not towards feeling terrible and feeling weak and feeling insecure, but towards um, these acronyms that I'm mentioning to you. Because if you can channel that energy, that nervous energy, you can be a great driver and you can really take the bull by the horns here. So what you have to do is you have to boss it. Boss it. Boss the test. B-O-S-S-I-T. -S this acronym, these abbreviations of boss it, correspond with some of the most common mistakes people make on the driving test. So let's go down through them. B, blind spot. You must remember your blind spot when you're moving off. You have to refresh your blind spot if it goes out of date and you have to make sure you give a proper check of your blind spot before you move off. So not like this. That's not a blind spot. That's barely a sideways glance, barely qualifies as one. A proper blind spot is when you turn your shoulder like this and this shoulder comes up here and you can see out your back passenger window. So B for blind spot. Next letter, O, observation. So this encompasses the looks at junctions as in looking left and looking right, previewing the roundabout, um, keeping the head moving at junctions and roundabouts, not looking the one way too long. And of course the mirrors as well, um, it comes under that umbrella as well, mirrors before you indicate, especially it's especially important to check the mirrors before you change lanes or overtake. So that's the first two letters, B for blind spot, O for observation. Next, S. S is for speed. So, of course, don't go too fast, but you don't want to go too slow either. Because what I find is a, a lot of people end up driving too slow in the driving test. Um, they're probably trying to put on some act or um, convince the tester that they're, that they're a great driver by by driving like really far below the speed limit. Bad idea. The driving tester just wants you to drive normally in a, in a regular, confident way. So don't drive too fast. So don't like don't don't drive at or above the speed limit if there's loads of parked cars and loads of potholes in the road. But at the same time, if it's a good safe road and you have enough space to go, don't uh, don't hang around like just just go for it. If it's safe to go, if it's safe and legal, just go. That's that S. Um, the next S is space. I see this a lot. A lack of space between the learner driver and parked cars. So maybe they're not moving out gradually enough. Maybe they're going too fast in tight streets. Maybe they're not given the door length on the left-hand side. 
So you must give proper space to parked cars, to cyclists, to obstructions. The next bit of, that, uh, of this acronym then is IT, IT. So I is indicators. I see this a huge amount of times after tests. Marks on signals. Now maybe the learner driver forgot the signal, perhaps they gave misleading signals, maybe they, they let the indicator switch off too early or they left it on too long, whatever. But you have to focus on your signals when you're preparing for a driving test. I see lots of marks on that, including the hand signals, by the way. Don't forget to know your hand signals as well. T then is the last one, the last letter of it, T, and that means thinking ahead. This really is the key to passing the driving test. Thinking ahead, planning ahead. I have a lot of drivers come to me and they're at this kind of carry on. They're, they're kind of checking the mirrors and doing all this kind of stuff every four or five seconds. Completely ridiculous and utterly unnecessary. Nobody cares what's behind you. The most important thing as a driver is what's in front of you, what's up ahead. So is there a child crossing the road up ahead? Is there a yellow box up there that you don't stop in? Is there a speed bump, whatever? Think ahead. There's a time and a place for mirror. The mirrors are important, but they're, they're, they're not more important than, than focus on what's ahead of you. So that's T. T is for thinking ahead and concentrating on what's ahead of you. So let's go down through those again. You have to boss it. B-O-S-S-I-T. B, blind spot. O, observation. S, speed. The other S, space. I, indicators. And then T, thinking ahead. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to let me know in the comment section if you have any abbreviations or acronyms that you find useful when you're driving. I'll be back very soon with another video and thanks for watching.